Member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. In 2009, Pavco issued a request for proposals to build a mega casino resort at BC Place. Two companies made proposals. In the middle of the one-month RFP process, one of the companies decided to give their uh, proposal an extra chance of success. Their investor and director, Richard Turner, made an unprecedented one-time $50,000 donation to the BC Liberal Party. Not surprisingly, his company, a small Las Vegas-based casino developer, was chosen by Pavco to develop BC Place. Does the minister responsible for BC Place stand behind this tendering process that selected Paragon? Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, and to the member opposite. Uh, this, uh, this process, as the member should know well, was a very uh, a robust, rigorous process and, uh, and, 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 and very defensible. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, the, the decision that was, that was taken by the, the, by the PAVCO board is one that, uh, that we, we believe was the right decision based on uh, the process that the decision went through. Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I'm glad the Minister is sitting so close to the Minister of Education because in March of 2013, the Minister of Education and the Minister of Justice approved a 70-year master development agreement with Paragon. The agreement halved what BC taxpayers could expect from Paragon from $6 million a year to $3 million a year. But despite being chair of the PAVCO board at the time, the Minister of Education went on the radio and told taxpayers last, just before last election that no such contract existed. Can the Minister responsible for BC Place explain why the Minister of Education misinformed the public about the existence of the 70-year contract between PAVCO and Paragon? Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Honourable Speaker, this is yet again another example of, of the, the opposition uh, uh, playing uh, footloose and fancy free with timelines. Uh, at, at that particular uh, point, at that particular point in time, uh, there, there are no decisions had been taken by the, the Pavco board, and for the member to, to suggest uh, anything other uh, at this point is simply is simply false. Here, here. Member. Vancouver Hastings. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, Paragon has only ever built two casinos in Canada. One of them was the Eagle River Casino. While Paragon promised that they would turn a profit by 2012, Eagle River was losing a million dollars a month in overhead alone. Since then, Paragon has filed for bankruptcy protection and left its First Nation partners with $81 million in debt. Honourable Speaker, there's an empty lot where Paragon promised a hotel. Does the Minister for BC Place still agree with his government's press release that describes Paragon Gaming as one of North America's leading destination resort developers? Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Uh, certainly on behalf of government, I can say that uh, I, I have confidence that the, the board uh, at the time, as well as, uh, as the board uh, uh, now, um, uh, did its due diligence. Uh, this, is a, this is a competent, uh, a competent uh, was and is a competent group of individuals who are, are discharged with exactly uh, those types of negotiations, and uh, uh, we, we stand by the decisions that have been taken. Here, here. Vancouver Hastings on a supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, Paragon's other Canadian casino was the River Cree Casino. When things at River Cree went sideways, Paragon notified their creditors of their intention to seek bankruptcy protection after defaulting on a $111 million loan. In the ensuing mess, Paragon's development partner spent so much on legal fees that they needed an extra $2 million from the Alberta government just to pay for lawyers. 
Honourable Speaker, we know this scheme with Paragon was supposed to supply the money to pay for the cost overruns on the roof. Can the minister responsible for PAVCO tell the House what due diligence did PAVCO do before they signed this 70-year agreement to build a mega casino in downtown Vancouver? Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker, uh, and to the member opposite. Again, uh, we, we continue to uh, stand behind the, the, uh, the, the diligence and the, the decisions that, uh, that, the, uh, that the, the PAVCO board uh, have taken. Uh, the, uh, th there have been uh, uh, delays that have been encountered from time to time on this particular project. Uh, there are complex First Nations uh, consultations that uh, have had to be uh, had to had to be undertaken. There uh, was a need to ensure uh, uh, that, the, that the financial uh, the financial uh, the financing was in place. Um, and uh, and there is uh, there are, there are complexities uh, with respect to uh, uh, certain certain requirements of the city of Vancouver, um, uh, uh, city of Vancouver. So, honourable speaker, we're going to continue to work with uh, with with Pavco and the board there as uh, as they continue to do their due diligence uh, uh, with Paragon on this particular project. Member for Burnaby Deer Lake.